the UFC is back inside the beautiful Red Rock Casino Resort and Spa, Las Vegas, Nevada. This should be a very special evening. We welcome you to UFC Fight Night Live. Hi again, everybody. I'm Mike Goldberg. Welcome once again to the Ultimate Fighting Championship. We have an incredible night of fights in store for you this evening, highlighted by a main event everyone is talking about. With me for the fights tonight again, my partner Joe Rogan. Joe, the fans are pumped up. Oh, yeah, and they should be, Mike. Looking at this fight on paper, it's very tough to call. I mean, they're both extremely well-rounded and in the best shape that we've ever seen them in. This is one of those matchups where anything can happen. Well, we will soon find out who will prevail in our main event of the evening. But before we officially get the night started, let's take a quick look at the rules of the octagon. Three judges will score the bout, the bout duration, three five-minute rounds. There are no championship fights on the card tonight. A 10-point must scoring system is in effect, with the round winner gaining 10 points, his opponent nine or less, based on effective striking, grappling, aggression, and octagon control. In our night with a welterweight matchup between Ultimate Fighter winner Matt Serra and dangerous Brazilian Tiago Pitbull Alves. A ferocious Muay Thai striker, Tiago Pitbull Alves chains together attacks with cruel intentions and bone shaking power. With knockout victories over some of the top competitors in the division, the Pitbull truly knows how to attack. A respected master of Henzo Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, Matt Serra has also shown UFC fans that he's just as dangerous when he chooses to stand and bang. This former welterweight champion is a dynamo anywhere the fight takes place. Energy, powered by Zions, the official energy drink of the UFC. And now with the official introductions, the veteran voice of the Octagon, here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live from the Red Rock Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. And now, it's time to begin our first bout of the evening. Three rounds in the UFC welterweight division. Introducing first. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist. He stands five feet, nine inches tall. Weighing in at 170 pounds. Fighting out of Coconut Creek, Florida. Tiago Pitbull Alvin. And now, Fighting out of the red corner. This man is a Brazilian jiu-jitsu fighter. He stands five feet, six inches tall. Weighing in at 170 pounds. Fighting out of East Meadow, New York. Matt the Terror And when the action begins, our referee in charge of this contest is Dan Mergliata. Dan Mergliata, our referee. Mike Goldberg, Joe Rogan, set for the start of round number one. Are you ready? Are you ready? Tiago Alves, Matt Serra. Hello, are we good? I think we are. Oh, look at that, switch kick. Serra's going to be looking to get it to the ground, don't want to strike with Alves. How do you push someone? Um, it's hold R1, R2, lead uppercut, I think. <laughs> oh, look at that switch kick to the head. Yeah, it's uh, if it isn't R1 and, and R2, it's just block and uh, and lead uppercut. It might just be that actually. I think it is. It's block lead uppercut. Oh, poor guard. 
Oh, it's looking to get up. Is the volume good, by the way? Yeah, I'm good, Craig. How are you? But how's, how's everyone doing? Oh, nice right hand there. Oh, but this is like control. His his ground empire is good, you know. He definitely doesn't want to be on the ground with Massera, but oh, look at this! though, reverses him. Oh, I mean, we have seen Matt in trouble on on off his back. Nick Diaz was um, Nick Diaz was punishing him. Yeah, I actually I didn't watch it. I I caught the gif. Oh, the like uh, the the the. Yeah, I, I saw the the clip on uh, Reddit. And uh, yeah, that was uh, that is the most bellicose thing. First it was a mouth guard, now it's that. Uh, I I don't mind. I, I I like I like Dustin. I like Habib. But I would have. I mean, I would have been awesome to see Dustin win just because of the story. But look, Habib's a beast, man. Got clinch work it. Might get some knees. Ooh, no. Oh, suffocate. Alves there, don't like uh, uh, stop. How do I say this? He's not. He's, he's not letting him get any kicks off. He's uh, clinching up with him. Snuff that range. Oh no problem. Yeah, that gear team was t dude. I was like for a second. I was. I had flashbacks to Kane Vadum and Fedor uh, Vadum. It was like, no way. Is he actually gonna tap? And that was fucking tight, man. I mean, you could see him swarming about. He was, uh, that was deep. First round over, that was quick. But then it is, uh, accelerated time, so can't change that, unfortunately. <sighs> yeah, although I don't think he would have. I don't know. I, I just there wasn't really any bad blood. So. <laughs> I, I don't know. We'll see. I usually just play UFC three when I feel like it because I don't really enjoy playing it a ton. I can play it with friends and play for a couple hours, but yeah, sometimes. Uh, well, a lot often I just need a break from it. But that was a great fight, man. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, with the, I, I know if you have uh, your console linked up to TV, the app, the YouTube app will let you watch it on your telly, which is nice. Look at that. Sarah with the kicks. What's up, FIFA? Oh, that was beautiful. The lead overhand and then follows up with the switch kick to the body. All right. Well, next time I do a stream, we'll, uh, we'll get that going. I saw Superman punch. Sarah's catching him, and he's caught his punch. Oh, I watched. Uh, I watched the film today. I watched. Um, yeah, D Dana. Yeah, Dana said his career is done. Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm good. All right. Yeah, I'll check it out. I'll check it out one of these days. I already got it. As well. I keep. I keep forgetting. I watched uh, Spider-Man to the Spider-Verse today. Such a good film. Um, I liked it a lot. Well, I say I liked it a lot more. I, I, I knew I'd probably like it, but man, it was the animation was beautiful. Ooh. I mean, I'm not a massive superhero fan, but Spider-Man, uh, Spider-Man has always been my favorite of the superheroes. Like, I can't, like, I'm not a massive fan of like. I say not a massive fan. I, I don't mind them at all. But I just don't really watch them. But I don't know, I'm, 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 I'm always partial to some Spider-Man. Yeah, the, the, yeah, they had some, you know, some music in there that was very, uh, was very, I don't know, modern. Uh, modern rap? Uh, yeah, it was, it was kind of modern rap, which sometimes doesn't always fit in a film like that, but I think they did well. There was a whole vibe they were had, they had going. Yeah, that, that was... Uh, that's fun to make. No, no, no. Check check the, check my community uh, page, Dr. Jones. Oh, nice right hand. Yeah, that was awesome, man. Dude... Every actor there killed it. I know. It's uh, 
I mean, you get some good, you get films with, with really good music. I mean, Game of Thrones, well, Game of Thrones isn't a movie, but, you know, TV shows with good soundtracks, but it, yeah, it's it's rare that sometimes, you know, that, that, yes, it's rare that it actually makes you feel, I don't know, it, I don't know, like, that, that film really, uh, it, uh, yeah, it played with the emotions. Oh, big right hand from Sarah in the left hook, look at this. See if he can knock him down. Not able to. Yeah, I know that. That's how I did the original tweets. The uh, Diaz and Gracie tweets. But, um... Yeah, Super showed me a good... I forgot to, I forgot to reply. I actually had a reply going, but I think I forgot to post it. Uh, to your comment. Um, yeah, Super showed me a website. So, it's a lot easier than inspect elementing all the time. Was well timed here. Just a beautiful slip and counter. And here we see some judo on display. Fantastic. Habib Smish. Yeah. And here's that <laughs> stunning counter punch. So uh, yeah. Well timed. Yeah, it's called uh, nice Tweet. Action in that round, tweet Chen? Right? Or something? Yeah, I chose that because of his uh, his Instagram handle is the same, so. <laughs> okay. Oh, look at that. He's rushing out his Alves. Nice little body, nice body work there. Sarah's really using his hands. Catches him with the big left. Alves is covering up. Oh, try to catch that punch. Well, he, uh, throw it to the body. <laughs> Man, I, I really thought that Alves would uh, do some good work on the feet, but Matt Sarah using his experience. He's got double, under got double unders. See if he pulls guard. Nope, but he throws him. Ooh, tries to go for a submission. Not able to, though. Does Nate train Cron? Uh, I'm not sure. Full mount. This is Full mount. Uh, yeah, I don't use, I, I use, um, I personally use dark mode, but it's, I, I, it's a lot easier to do, um, to do the tweet gen thing. Like, I, I don't mind the inspect element, but it takes a while. And if you accidentally refresh the page, all your work is gone, so. Not that it's, like, super hard, it's not hard work, but it takes a while. Um. Good job, hip escaping there, moves to half guard. For what it is, I think then the white, the white works. Maybe in the future they'll add dark theme to that website. The only other thing is you can't add images, but I could do that in Photoshop anyway. Hey, what's up, man? How are you? Hey, the clock's still on. I guess I, didn't, I didn't. Uh... Oh wait, have I, I might not. Have, I don't think I've played this. Oh, nice uppercut. I don't think I've played this since UFC 8, so that explains why the clock is still on. This is do or die for Tiago Alves. He gets the buster. Uh, probably not. I got stuff happening for the rest of the day, so. Well, for a couple hours later today, and. Uh, I don't know. I've just been chilling out, playing some other games. I've, I've been wanting to, but I just I haven't been uh, getting around to it. So today I played a bit of uh, Red Dead 2. Finished in the epilogue. Well, I say I haven't finished it yet, but I'm yeah, getting further. In the epilogue. That these men are really working to get to a dominant position. Ten seconds left. Oh, nice gets caught. Right yeah, uh... How are you, Alison? Um, Jones to uh, actually reminded me... This is a rematch. I didn't actually realise, but... I think it might have been a tournament... Was it a tournament fight? No. Was it? It might have been a tournament fight, actually. No, I think it was a tournament fight. It's just... So it is technically a rematch, yeah. Well, it is a rematch. Let's take a look at the yeah, that was my personal game of the year, but I mean, it was 2018 had some bangers. It's like every even year seems to be fire. Although we do, we got a lot of great games coming out this year as well. I think it was God of War. Yeah, it was it was nice to have a fight on a lot earlier. 
has the decision. Yeah, true. 2020 Avengers is going to be a good, I'm sure. I'm sure the people who like that. Got some great, great does behind it. All right, so it's a 29-28. This is, I think, this is Sarah's win. I would be surprised. What? Okay, was that the same judge who scored Barboza and Felder? Two? Hello? I mean, he had some good... I mean, he did some good work on the ground, but he also got taken down. He got rocked. I'm not... He never got knocked down, but he did get hurt. I'm not sure. Yeah, what took Legion is going to be good. I'm looking forward to that. I think that was a controversial decision there. I don't know. I didn't think... Or I don't think... Uh, I don't think that was that was his win, but hey. Oh, okay, cool. Maybe they were paid. Maybe it was uh, the Diego Sanchez school of robbery, corruption. Yeah, got a war was super deserving. But Red Dead too. Oh my god, it is. It's. I just. I get lost in that game, man. It's one of the few games where I truly feel like the character. I just, oh, it's so good. Anyway, um, I actually, oh yeah, I'm playing Death Stranding for sure. I'm probably going to stream it. Um, I actually thought that like that, like guillotine, get, yeah, I, I, I agree, uh, Alpha. I keep calling you beta, Alpha. I don't think you might do. But um, that guillotine gave me flashbacks to Kane and Vadoom and Vadoom and uh, Fedor. Just because, first of all, Fedor was also a Russian undefeated, sort of imposing figure. Oh, that that's totally fine, man. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people who are uh, um, who are just playing on their own or playing themselves and don't want to get sport, and that's perfectly fine. I wouldn't want to do it either. I mean, honestly. Well, if I'm if I plan on playing a game like just to myself, I won't look at anything on the internet until I finish it. We are. Oh, yeah, Dustin was done. I think. Yeah, I did the same. I I just I bought it, didn't look at anything, and I I, I went in it completely blind, and I'm so happy I did. Oh man, that game, that game is so nice, so good. So Matyushenko actually uh, lost to Diabate um, in the last fight. However, Anderson was removed from the rankings, so Leo Tur got bumped back up into the top 15, and Matyushenko needs a fight. So these two haven't fought for a little while. Yeah, uh, the, 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 the probably GTA 6, I would assume on. Uh, PS5 and Xbox Scarlet. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be great. Also, look at this: the wrestling from Matyushenko, the strength. Yeah, maybe on what game? I imagine it is. If they're using Red Dead 2's like capture tech and everything, which I'm sure they are. Oh, look at this! Off the cage. Maybe. Yeah, I like that. I will take quality over quantity. Here's the funny thing for me, right? On GTA 5, I preferred the online to the story. Well, actually, to be fair, I can't really say that because I haven't finished the story, but I played a lot more of the online than I did the story. But on Red Dead, it's the complete opposite. It's, for me, it's I've just absolutely spent a ton of time on the, uh, on the story and not much on the online, so. Yeah, I'll give it a go, maybe. Gegard might be possible on this. Yeah, uh, well, on the upside, this is one of the few EA franchises that actually seems to take that approach. They don't just pump one out every year, which would be, which 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 would be a bad idea. Look at that. Yeah, it's not fantastic. I like that. Well, here's the thing: they're actually releasing an update in the next couple of days on the 10th, actually, which is apparently supposed to increase the you know responsive. I say responsive, make it more snappy feeling. I just hope there's a there's there's a oh look at this the arm lock, the arm lock throw for Matyushenko. I just hope that there is a option for it because I I must I must say on occasion it does feel a little unresponsive. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's online. I'm not sure if they put it in the I'm not sure if they put it in the single player. It does feel a little bit unresponsive sometimes, but I also really like the weightiness because it feels real realistic. If if it, you know, hopefully if it is if it is also put into offline, hopefully there's a. Uh, 
Hopefully there's a an option to turn it on and off. Also, I really like the survival mechanics. I wouldn't even be mad if they had a thing where you had to piss and shit, although... You can kind of explain that after, like, when, when you sleep, but... Like, in the time, yeah. Yeah, every, it feels mechanical, but in, like, a nice way. It, it, I don't know, it's, it's, it's one of the few games that... F that that have done realistic feeling animations while still feeling relatively nice to play. I mean, I know a lot of people who have, who have a try well, I say no, I know, I've heard about a lot of people who are, like, they struggle with the controls or they think it's a little too weighty, but I think, I don't know. Personally, I was okay with it, but I can kind of see if other people struggle with it. But. I think The Witcher 3 had two control schemes as well. Yeah, I, I laughed my ass off when he said uh, the piss could be a weapon. Oh, look at that kick to the well. That kick to the body got him. Uh, got Matyshenko fainting a little bit or oh, reacting. Oh, nice counter! Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh yeah, the Modern Warfare beta is going to be in a, in a few days. Yeah, I agree. I, I do wish I could have moved quicker to the camps, though. Like, I, I understand not running, but maybe a light jog. You can do a sort of... You can do a fast walk or a quick walk, but... Yeah, the gun... Oh, my God. I actually... Red Dead 2, I decided to turn off the auto-aim, because in GTA, I keep it on, but... In Red Dead 2, I decided, all right, let me turn this off, and I found some... I found a, I found a nice control... Uh, I found some uh, nice sensitivity balance and everything, so... I, uh... I, uh, what am I going to say? Yeah, I managed to get it feeling nice. And, uh, dude, it's so nice when you pop someone in here. Dead Eye is also really, it's, it's, it is kind of OP, but it's, it's fun OP, you know? And you have to really have, you have to have some tonics on you if you, uh, or some chewing tobacco if you want to, uh, if you want to, you know, keep using it. So it's not, it is spammable, but it's not, you know, it's not like infinite. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, it feels a lot less mechanical than in Red Dead 2. Oh, yeah, well, you get keyboard and mouse lobbies then. But I like that. I like that they don't put them in the controller players. Uh, what, 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 uh, what, what, if it, well, sorry, let me say that again. Alison, are you talking about Death Stranding or Modern Warfare? Yeah, I, uh, it is a be beautiful scenery in, uh, Red Dead, uh, Death Stranding. Oh yeah, I mean, I don't. It's either going to be incredible or, I mean, I, I, I. It's going to be. It's weird to imagine it being bad or mediocre. I. The, my only. My only. I'm not a worry. My only question is. I shoot. I mean, I mean, there's got to be more to the gameplay than just walking like in free roam, right? I mean, there has to be. I know there's elements of you know shooting things and stealthing your way through, but I mean, I'm sure there's. I mean, I'm sure that sure, it will. Uh, be a bit more than I'm imagining. Oh, got a buster at the end of the round, second round. I do apologise for not commentating a ton, but well. Who do you think's ahead on the judges' scorecards? That last round could have gone either way. Going into the third, it's still. I haven't finished the GTA 5 story. I've heard like a couple things about it, but I, I, I mean, it's, 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 it's okay. From well, I mean, I mean, it's I like what I played, but I, I don't know. Red Dead 2 just captured me, man. Let's take a look at the replay. Not, not a ton, just one fight. This was that counter. Such unbelievable timing on that. It yeah, I mean, I even liked Mega Solid 5 a ton. That was, was my favorite MGS game. And I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm down to, I mean, I really like the open world. I mean, I also like the linear stuff, but, you know, I definitely don't mind the open world. The sound design in 5 is so nice. It, it might be a case of... Yeah, I didn't watch. I didn't watch Bell at all, but I saw a clip of it. Dude, I need to play some of the old GTAs like GTA 3, Vice City, San Andreas. Nice body shot there. A kick again. I like that Machida doesn't really have a switch kick to the body because he never. His his style was never like visibly loading up on kicks. It was very much sort of just throwing them. Obviously, you know, fading and setting them out, but he didn't really, like... He never really gave a tell on them. I never played San Andreas. 
but um, I'm gonna have to try. I might get I might get the uh, the emulated version on PS4 because that is uh, you know it's, it's you know higher res than the PS2 version, and it uh, it has the same. It's not the PS3 uh, remaster, which is also the mobile version, which is the 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 the. <laughs> The issue with that one is that they redid a lot of the lighting and stuff, so it kind of ruined the original vibe. Oh, gets him down. Yeah, San Andreas is really the one of the swan songs of the PlayStation 2. Vice City? They had the neons. It was thought of that 80s vibe. Vice City was basically 80s Miami. And I recently learned that there is a Haitian friendly and unfriendly version. I didn't actually know they were really separate versions. I, I, I had no idea there was a whole controversy about it. But there you go. Oh, yeah. They did that to save the frame rate. Uh, we, we did. Uh, GTA 4 was was Liberty City, which was uh, New York. Wasn't GTA 3... Was GTA 3 Liberty... No, hold on, yeah. Wait, was GTA 3 Liberty City as well, or... Was uh, was that a different city? Yeah, maybe a mix would be nice. Man, look at this movement from Machida. He's getting out of the way, but he's got to guess... He's, he's got to really... Do... Oh, he's getting hit. He's got to land something big if he wants to have any chance of winning this, but I don't think it's going to come. Well, it, uh, I, I guess it was, but it also had the let's go bowling meme. And... That is the end of the third and Chicago would be cool. Joe, that was a pretty darn good fight. I guarantee there'd be some uh, some references to Watch Dogs. Probably. Yeah, i really got to play some of those, man. If I ever get San Andreas, you want me to stream or something? I mean, I, I'll stream it. Let's take a look at the replay, Mike. This was an unbelievable suplex. Beautiful technique. <laughs> And this was that okay. crippling shot that got delivered, bam, right on target. And here we see some amazing <laughs> anticipation with the tremendous... Chinatown Wars, I've heard about that. <laughs> sea shanties. I had Liberty City stories and for some reason I decided to sell it, I don't know why. But, I'll probably get it again one day. I don't know if Liberty City, Liberty City stories seem to contain... The game, but I don't know. 27, 29, 28, and 30. 27, yeah, this is definitely uh, Mayushenko's fight. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if... Uh, what's that game that was... Um, that came out that wasn't very good. The 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 sea one, uh, Sea of Thieves. That was a cool idea. I would have liked to um, to mess around in that, but yeah, I didn't. First of all, I didn't have an Xbox One at the time, and uh, I don't think my PC was up to spec really at that time. Yeah, it's gotten better, but GTA 4's uh, physics was awesome. I remember that. Skull and Bones, yeah, isn't that Ubisoft's new game? There needs to be parts of the Caribbean mods for that. If it comes out on PC. Okay, next fight is... Also an undercard back. Chris Carriasso versus Charlie Valencia. For these for these fighting out bouts, I have to fucking look at, look, look at the... Like, I actually have to look up a roster um, for this game just to see who isn't, in, who isn't ranked. If I can stick someone on there. Because I do want to get everyone in. I do want to get everyone involved, but... <laughs> the Battle of the Gay Tony, yeah. And Charlie Valencia. I know some, I, some I, th I think I've heard about some people playing PS2 games that when they did have a memory card, so they would just like keep the the keep their hair, keep their PlayStation on. I'm speaking too quick for my own good at this point. Oh yeah, also. Uh in the context of universe mode, it turns out Tyson Fury has just tweeted. Uh, here's his tweet. 
Ezio. Also, this is kind of a, a mid broadcast thing, so let's switch back. <laughs> Could have done that a better time, but I only just saw the clock. Those are vicious. Oh, ducking in and counters that nicely. Push kick. Oh, catches him with that hand as he goes for a takedown. Charlie Valencia, man, he is the underdog of all, of all underdogs in this division. He's uh, he's okay. I mean, he's got you know he's got skill, but he is he, you know he's not exceptional. Wasn't Black Flag really good? Just uh, ship wise. The actual Pirates of the Caribbean game wasn't awful. I mean, I loved it as a kid. At World's End. I know there's a couple others. Oh, look at that jab animation. Nice. He's, yeah, he's got some decent moves. Dude, I... I, I want to get Odyssey so bad. I love that ancient Greek kind of timeline or, or time period. I don't have it, but if I ever get it, I don't mind. I mean, the Lego games seem fun enough. Big shots here from Valencia. <laughs> Ariello held one. Which caught like the Italian. Oh, look at this. Kamora from Carriasso, but it's too loose. Valencia in a side control, landing some big shots. It's that wrestling of Valencia. It's, it's underrated. He will uh, grind you out if he needs to. Oh. Couple big shots. Carrios is bleeding. And now full mount. Let's see if he hammers him with a couple of shots. He catches the punch. But again. Let's see if Valencia can land a big shot. There we go. Oh, he gets hit again. Okay. That's definitely Valencia's round, I'd say. Although he did get knocked down early on, I think, but... The best year in gaming history. Um... Uh, hmm. That's an interesting one. I would... Hmm... This was a beautiful counter. Unbelievable. 2016 was pretty loaded. And last year was fantastic as well. And here's that um, devastating counter strike. That is world class striking right there. I mean, you had well, the early 2000s had like a few GTA games which were incredible. It's uh It's an interesting it's an interesting one. I mean, you had last year, you had fucking God of War, Red Dead Redemption, um, Sekiro. You had some seriously good games. Round two. Oh, immediately Carriasso shoots, but not able to get him down. Nice stepping jab there. And then the body shot. Oh yeah, the Halo. How could I forget about Halo? I would love that. I mean, you can get the uh, the uh, uni uh, the manager slash universe mode type game. World of MMA 5. But yeah, 2015 had The Last of Us. Uh, yeah, The Last of Us. That game is so good that I watched an entire playthrough of the original. Got it on PS4 and still love the shit out of it. Yeah. Pushes him off of the feet. Sivio dives into the guard. Able to posture up. And in the side control. He's got half guard. Two thousand eight was uh well. 2008 Metal Gear Solid 4. 
Yeah. Yeah, Skyrim. Fallout well, 4 was a decent game, but, uh... Hey, what's up now? When, when did Fallout 4 come? Was it 2015? The Fallout 4 released? I think it was 2015. Or was it 16? No. Mm. Let's get back to his feet. See if Karras will land some shots here. Ah, uh, he's in the arc. Oh, he has a quick headgear, I didn't know. You guys remember when Karyos fought Burrell? Yeah, I thought it was around that time. Dude, I have like 60 Skyrim mods. I just, I, I just, I started loading up mods. At one point, I actually downloaded um, a fucking insane gold mod, which gave you like a ton of gold in each chest. And then I felt bad, so I just got rid of all the gold and uninstalled the mod. That seems like a cool idea. Oh, Valencia hurts him. Yeah, COD 4 was a landmark for the... First person shooter industry. With the Shomra, rather. Okay, let's just line some shots here. Good round. Yeah, these guys are very active on the ground. One mistake in this final round, and either fighter could finish it early. You swim that arm over. Find those punches. Hey, and find the knees right after. Elite forward. Well, Modern Warfare definitely feels like Elite Forward. I mean, the gunplay is tight. It looks more realistic. Feels more realistic. Sounds more realistic. Guns will fight. They crack in that game. I mean, you get here. I mean, there are so many weapons that feel like a one or two shot headshot kill. Yeah, man, he got fuck. He got mauled. Well, actually, no, I say that. He got mauled when he got wrestled, but otherwise he did okay. Now the only problem is half the, pretty much all the fight was him getting wrestled against the cage. That gear team was tight though. That gear team was tight. I enjoyed Advanced Warfare. Honestly, I enjoyed it, but eventually, dude, it, there were some fucking sweaty people playing that game. And you get them playing every Call of Duty, but uh, I think Elite Forward in terms of Call of Duty, yeah. It's it feels like a more visceral. Version. You know what it feels like? It feels like if someone took Battlefield, turned it into Call of Duty, but kept the sort of the feeling of the guns. No, not feeling of the guns. It, it, okay, not even that. It feels like a, a mix of Battlefield. Um, a mix of Battlefield, Call of Duty, but with, a, with you know, more Call of Duty in terms of feeling. But, like, in terms of, like, visually... Um, Visually, it looks it looks a little bit like Battlefield in terms of like the way the guns wobble about or you know, sort of yeah move about in your hand. It's 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 a, it's a tricky one to describe, but it really I don't know. I really like it. I mean, it feels guns feel powerful. I mean, they're definitely. I know they're trying to give the whole more realistic thing and their the vibe, and they're definitely. Uh, it definitely feels more realistic. Also, the animations are great. It feels really nice and mechanical as well. Gets caught with a uh, right hand, or left hand rather. I do apologize for not commentating as well on the fight, but you know. When I when I, sometimes I get on a bit of a, uh, when I start, when, the hair, hair, hair. Can I speak today? Sometimes I start rambling and I, it's hard to stop. Yeah, uh, I forget his name, but he's the, the black guy, isn't he? The lead animator, yeah, he, uh, I, he, I, I really like his, I really like his mindset. Yeah, he just wants to do the best job, you know. He, you know, he's not, he's not motivated by, oh, yeah, yeah, well, I say he's not motivated, eh, not, 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 he, he does it because he loves it. He doesn't do it because of the money. Yeah, that's a good point. Every, everything after Modern War, you know, the funny thing is, it was initially going to be another World War Two game, but. But um, Infinity Ward convinced, nice reversal, convinced Activision that they should do Modern Warfare, so. Reversal, see if Valencia can land some shots. Oh, clips him with the left hand. Tony, uh, Tony, Tony's best shot, I think, is his jiu-jitsu. 
But I just don't know if that's going to get smothered and, and sort of nullified by Habib's pressure and wrestling. I've been never very good at World of War, though. Recently, I've been playing it on PC. And it's, uh, it's good fun, man. Let's go to the replay of that round, Mike. This was well timed here. Just a beautiful slip and counter. And here you can see the very well timed counter. Slipping out, back in, and connecting. The judges. Audio's jiu-jitsu is, is, is also ridiculous, but Tony's got a very unique style, that like 10th planet. Yeah, that was, that's a stacked year. Alright. Hmm. Bletchy, maybe? Yeah. Charlie Valencia earns the victory. Here's the thing. I don't think Tony's going to get as tired as Dustin did, so... Um, I, I think he will be, he'll, he'll have the ability to finish later on in the fight compared to Dustin. Oh, so now that we're at the end of the fight, let me pull up those tweets again. So this is uh, what Tyson Fury tweeted in the context of universe mode. So This is his first tweet. Following my successful Octagon debut, I've decided to start training with good friend Daniel Cormy at the American Kickboxing Academy. He tweeted this uh, today, just a few minutes ago. So he will be joining AKA, working on his wrestling with Kane, with DC, with Habib. So that's a scary prospect right there. Six foot eight, incredible boxer, working on his wrestling. And as it turns out, Luke Rockhold doesn't like that because he... Uh, he got suspended for... Why did he get suspended? I don't know. I thought that was a block. Oh, well. He also... Uh, maybe he got suspended for talking shit to Tyson. And, uh, and because the Twitter... The the Twitter heads are uh, apparently kibble warriors. Or oh, no, I don't know. Well, I thought that was a block. <gasps> oh, well. It kind of works. Anyway. Do they actually... Do they let you do blocks on that website? Or is it just suspensions? Didn't quite, didn't catch the. T what would he say? Uh, he would say. I don't think he'd say much. Let me go back to my live dashboard. Oh, okay. Right. Well, I thought it was a block. Actually, never mind. But suspension works. <laughs> Who's next? Okay, we got uh, the rest of the... Well, we got the rest of the main card fight. So we have one, two, three, four, five more fights left. The next one is Mike Brown versus George Roop. So Mike Brown won his last fight by Tico, if I remember correctly. So... <laughs> Smell that ass! <laughs> At Dickweed, please advise. Yeah, it's 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 a little odd, but hey, what you can do. Coming up next, it's a featherweight collision between Mike Brown and George Roop. A former lightweight and ultimate fighter competitor, George Roop is best known for his incredible head kick victory against the Korean zombie Chan Sung Jung. Tonight, Roop will once again look to showcase that knockout power here in the octagon. A boxer and a wrestler, Mike Brown showcased a variety of talents during his successful WEC career. Now a competitor in the UFC featherweight division, he continues to use his knockout power and submission skills to remain at the top of the sport.
brought to you by Zenergy, powered by Zions, the official energy drink of the UFC. Once again, with our official introductions for this battle, the veteran voice of the Octagon, Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC featherweight division. Introducing first. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist. He stands six feet, one inch tall. Weighing in at 145 pounds. Fighting out of Tucson, Arizona. George Rude. And now, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a boxer and a wrestler. He stands five feet, six inches tall. Weighing in at 145 pounds. Fighting out of Coconut Creek, Florida. Mike Brown. And when the action begins, our referee in charge of this contest is Mario Yamasaki. Mario Yamasaki, our referee. I'm Mike Goldberg alongside Joe Rogan. We are set to get ready, things guys. started. George Roop, Mike Brown. Maybe. I mean, that is... Yeah, I would be... At, I would be fucking gobsmacked if Mastery wins that, but... Hey, look at that flying knee from Roop. He's got a big height advantage, but... Roop is... Uh, no, Mike Brown is a tough motherfucker. <laughs> I mean, he was the man in WC until Faber came around and booped him. Ooh, nice flying knee there. It got blocked, but it was a nice attempt. I think uh, Mike Brown has the hooks. <clears throat> oh, takes his back. See if he's able to throw him. I don't know if Rupert has the pull guard or he has the suplex. I would guess suplex. Oh, I kick from Brown. And the shot. But gets stuffed. They apparently made Dana says they're going to make a baddest motherfucker belt, the BMF belt. I, it seems to be legit, as in it's actually going to be a new belt, which is interesting. Unless they just mean it like me metaphorically. Well over two minutes remains in round number one. Oh, reversal from Roop, and gets reversed himself. Watch another reversal about happen. Yep, so that would be funny. Yeah, I I mean it's it's I tell you what there's a, the the few fighters that have decent uh, connections are usually the ones that play games and stuff or just have like you know do a lot on their computer. Brian gets him down. Just over a minute remains. Oh, he got reversed. Passes to half guard. <sighs> 165 would be. You know, that'd be a good. I bet, I bet Habib would go 165. He probably would. I would love to see Kevin Lee at 165. But not, once, not 155. He's it's too much weight. It's cut. Ooh. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. That'd be a, a bit interesting fight because, I mean, Paul Felder is tough. He took some shots from Edson. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure Connor, if he landed, would probably hurt him badly. But if he can't put him out, I mean, he'd probably be a little bit undersized. But I don't think he'd... Ooh, I don't know. He cuts a fuck ton of weight to make 170. He is a massive welterweight. From that round, Mike. Nice stiff counter right here. And here's a solid clean I don't think he has. Those can really take a fighter out of his game plan. He's been wobbled a bit, but not not, not ever put out cold. You don't get the take down, you're going back to the strikes. You're looking for You know, Colby I think would Colby that's interesting. I don't know how he would do versus Habib, honestly. That would also be very good. 
I still, I think Connor would win now, though. <laughs> that old man's got a chin. Mike Perry, yeah, he will. Uh, he gave Felder a good fight. That was on short notice for Felder, though. Like fucking Edson Hinn was some seriously strong will kicks or, or spinning kicks to the body, but did nothing to him. Rube's got some nice, uh, some nice defense here on the mat. Look at this. Guess his back. But Brown reverses. Escaping there moves to half. Guard. Oh, he got reversed. Half guard. Side control. Don Joy pushed down the leg. Got the hip. Not able to get full mount. Ooh. Rupe has butterfly. Butterfly guard. And back to full guard. And again reverses him. I wouldn't mind seeing someone go for a gear seat here. <clears throat> I wish I could up their tech. Like, if I could adjust AI tendencies, that would be incredible. If I could do that, then we we would uh, we would fix this whole reversing issue, which is even worse on Ultimate. I would I like I would have the AI. I would put the AI on Ultimate, but the problem is, um, while the the striking is great, the grappling is just it's even more uh, more of a reversal fest than it is now. Ninety seconds remains in the second. Good draw. He's in guard here. Which is which is also why I go a bit quiet when they when they're grappling because unless they're ground and pounding, there's not really much to commentate on besides oh look a reversal another reversal and again a reversal. Well, that was a nice sweep though. Couple of shots there. Base of the feet. Good second round. We saw some decent groundwork in that second round, Joe. Yeah, these guys are very active on the ground. One mistake in this final round, and either fighter could finish it early. Let's go to the replay, Mike. Nice stiff counter right here. Ooh. It's and a nice jab. That hard <clears throat> fought takedown to get the fight to the mat. What a swerve. They've got two heavyweight this fouls coming out next, so. Nasty grounded pound to bust open Those would be fun. Solid wrestling skills on display in that round, Mike. Ready to start round three. There's the beautiful Brittany. Last round. Oh, Brad was saying good on the on the takedowns, but there he goes. A nice little combo there on the feet. But Rupert's been able to reverse consistently and do some nice work uh, when he's when uh, when Brown has been on his back. So, oh, he's landing some shots on the feet though. Rupert's got to watch that defense. And he gets him down. That's big. Oh, trying to go for a Kimura. Rube's got good, uh, decent submissions. Good Never count him out. Mount. Oh, here we go, full mount. He's trying to go for that submission. But... Oh, he got reversed. See if he goes for it here. No. And he's got it. And he's down. Back up. Tough to do in this position with the cage there. And back down. He gets a takedown. And reversed. Side control. Inside the guard, posturing up. Side control. Postured up. Pushes them off with the feet. Back to their feet. And no, they're not. I don't know why my brand didn't get up, but hey. Oh, look at this though, sweep. And he gets them down. 
Did any of you catch the Neil deGrasse Tyson podcast uh, on Rogan's? Uh, yeah, did you ever? Did you see the Rogan podcast with Neil deGrasse Tyson on it? By the way, I watched a good uh, hour of it, but it seemed that Neil was interrupting Rogan a lot, and a few at a couple points or a few points, you could see Rogan like visibly annoyed that he was getting interrupted. I was. I mean, he didn't snap back or anything, but. I'm, uh, I was half expecting him to at one point. And I like Tyson, but yeah, he was, he was very much trying to get the final word a lot. Oh, oh, look at this, arm triangle. That was kind of tight initially, but Rube's going to get out. Yeah, the ones I, the, the only ones I consistently watch all the way to the end uh, are the Joe Diaz ones, because they are always hilarious. And the stories are awesome. He's got his back here, and the fight is Good fight. Over. Round three is complete. Joe, you know what? Decent fight. Not going to go into the UFC Hall of Fame of fights, but not bad. It definitely wasn't embarrassing. Is that, some, is that a new animation? Let's Have I seen that one before? Some of the action from that round, I don't... Oh, this I might have seen that once or twice, but... Counter right here. This is flawless timing. And this was that hard-fought takedown to get the fight to the mat. And here's that submission escape. Great to That's good points from Mike Brown. Here. I think that might be Brown's fight. The judges have rendered their decision. And here is Bruce Buck. Yeah. And it's a close one. After three rounds of I think Brown might have edged it, but we'll see. The judges score cards for a decision. The judges score it 30, 27, 30, 27, hmm. and 30. 27, declaring the winner by unanimous decision. Mike yeah. Brown. I don't know about 30 27, but I. I, Victorious once again. I did think Brown took it. Okay, on to the next one, which is Overeem and Gonzaga. So that's. The battle of the heavyweights. Winner will move up a good bit, so lot to win, lot to gain, rather. collision between Alistair Overeem and the dangerous Brazilian Gabriel Gonzaga. A jiu-jitsu expert better known to UFC fans for his knockout power, Gabriel Gonzaga is a powerhouse in the heavyweight division with a highly aggressive offense. Win or lose, his fights very rarely go to a judge's decision. One of the most powerful and feared strikers of all time. Alistair Overeem has held prestigious world titles in both MMA and kickboxing at the same time. Tonight, this gifted athlete will be looking to showcase his infamous striking skills inside the octagon. UFC Store. The sport lives here. We are now set for the official introductions, and with that, here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC heavyweight division. Introducing first. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a Brazilian jiu-jitsu fighter. He stands six feet two inches tall. Weighing in at 255 pounds, fighting out of Ludlow, Massachusetts, by way of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Gabriel Nepal Gonzaga. And now, fighting out of the red corner, this man is a kickboxer. He stands six feet five inches tall, 
weighing in at 255 pounds, fighting out of Los Angeles, California, the Demolition Man, Alistair Overeem. And when the action begins, our referee in charge of this contest is Kevin Mohall. Kevin Mohall, our referee. Hi again, everybody. Mike Goldberg alongside Joe Rogan, and we are ready for round You're one. Ready. Gabriel Gonzaga, Alistair Overeem. Round one is underway. First round, don't blink. This could end in an instant. Never forget the night he head kicked Mirko Kroka. Yeah, Gabriel Gonzaga carries some serious. Overeem's gonna be looking to work that. <laughs> work, work that, work those strikes, especially the uh, the knees and the kicks. There we go. There's one. Gonzaga does have that high kick. Look at that though. Over him, just able to get out of the way. Nice little body shot there from over him. Expect to see Gonzaga shoot. Try and get this to the ground. And he's there, uh, he's gassing already. Gotta be, gotta be careful he doesn't blow that gas tank. <laughs> Three high kicks in a row, eh? Oh, nice uh, left hand from over him. Oh, counter there from Gonzaga, though. And again with that high kick, just misses there. Under three minutes now. Both guys staying in he lands that one. Oh, left hand. From over aim. Nice little jab to the body, sets up the uh, other strikes. Keeps going with that high kick, does Gonzaga. I think he's got to be measured with that. Yeah. You've got to remember that over and over. the the over him is not Crow Cop. Oh. Oh, must hit him with that body knee. It's gonna start. It's really gonna start sapping his stamina. Nice. Pushes him away. Hits him with a jab. Nice blocks from uh, Alistair, although as I said, he just got hit. Oh, lead hook. Catches him off guard. Super does he over him go for a high kick anytime? So, oh, he gets, gets clobbered by a big right. Let's we'll see if we see over him go with the kicks at all. Probably doesn't want to get them caught and taken down, but... you got to think. For once in his career, he actually has the better gas tank at this point. Round one is complete. Let's hope their corner suggests throwing a takedown or two into the mix. These two aren't putting together anything on the feet. He's running backwards, so you're gonna have to keep jabbing in. You're gonna have to throw your right short and then All right, go. All right. go. Start the finish off. Hey, you never get the cage. You turn him, I want your knee and dig into the body. Movement, pissing him off. Okay, keep moving, keep moving. We just gotta get a little more active with everything, okay? Keep that range. Let's take a look at some of the action from that round, Mike. This was that counter. Such unbelievable timing on that. And a punishing counter right here. You can see all it takes is one opening and bang. And here we see some amazing anticipation with a tremendous counter. Don't vary from the game plan. Are you paying attention to me? Don't vary from the game plan. Right? The beautiful Ariani gets us set for round number two. Okay, fighters, you ready? You ready? This is round two. Second round. Ooh. Left hand there from over him. Gonzaga ducks the right, though, but he comes back with his own right hand. Gotta keep that defense up. Nice push kick. Mix it up, keep them guessing. Do that uppercut was pie shook fucking shook the screen. Yeah. Maybe not over him is most maybe not the best idea from over him, but then he wasn't really known for his fight IQ when it came to his horse meat days. It was mostly just seek, locate, destroy, but he's down! Over him knocks Gonzaga down. Let's see if this can finish it. This is big shots, it's over. Yeah, you can't take much from uh, Roy Green. Overroid.
horse meat ream. Everything. Alistair Overeem with the spectacular finish. And that's the beginning of the end. Gets on top of him and swarms on him. That's a good win for Alistair. He needed one. Get it from this angle. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm not sure what his game plan was there, but hey, only he and his team knows. Bruce Buffer has the official decision, ladies and gentlemen. Referee Kevin Mohall has called a stop to this contest at one minute twenty seconds of the second round, declaring the winner by TKO, the Demolition Man. Alistair Overeem! Alistair Overeem, the winner. Look how nice that is. 140 10. Hmm. Yeah, 90% head damage. That was, uh. He had more stamina somehow, but. That was brutal. Yeah, next fight is Congo versus Rampage. Rampage stepping up on short notice. No, oh, I say short notice. Congo is ready to go, but nobody wanted to fight him. So Rampage decided, all right, fuck it. Let me just cut less weight and I will uh, fight Congo. So it's a, good bit, it's a big one. I mean, hell, if it's probably a one-off for Rampage, but who knows? If he wins in spectacular fashion, maybe he, maybe, maybe he uh, decides he wants to stay there. Who knows? A heavyweight. collision between dangerous striker Chet Congo and the always entertaining Quentin Rampage Jackson. Charismatic former light heavyweight champion and part-time movie star Quentin Rampage Jackson first made a name for himself with his pro wrestling style slams. Combine that with big punching power, and you have the makings of a crowd favorite who can finish fights in spectacular fashion. A heavyweight striker fighting out of Paris, France, Czech Congo has become well known to UFC fans for his athleticism and his knockout power. He'll be looking to throw some thunderous leather inside the octagon tonight. With our official introductions, Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC heavyweight division. Introducing first. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist. He stands six feet, one inch tall, weighing in at 205 pounds. Fighting out of Irvine, California, by way of Memphis, Tennessee, Winton Red. Page Jackson! And now, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a freestyle fighter. He stands six feet four inches tall, weighing in at 230 pounds. Fighting out of Paris, France. Check Congo! And when the action begins, our referee in charge of this contest is Herb Dean. Herb Dean is our referee. Mike Goldberg with Joe Rogan. And we are ready to start round are one. Are you ready to fight? Quentin Rampage ready? Jackson, Chick Congo. Hopefully the leg decides to stop now that we're in the fight. There we go. Kind of. Okay. Congo going to the body and switches up to the head. 
versatile in his fight, especially in the Ooh, nice right hand. Surprise he carrying by taking the fight to the ground very often. And his stand up, as always. Those hooks from Rampage. Cargo's gotta be careful. He does have a somewhat weak chin, so. If he eats a big shot, that could be it. And he's eat already he's already eating ground and pound. Rampage impressively managed to slam. Or throw the big check Congo. But now he's eating some ground and pound. You don't want to do that. Even even though Rampage is a savage, you know, check Congo has a fuck ton of power. But look at this, double unders. And again, he gets him down. Half guard. Let's see if he can reverse the full mount. Nope. But he gets side control. Will he land some shots? No. Nope. See if he postures up at all. No, but he gets full mount. Now back to oh, back to mount again. Okay, Congo, trying to get back to his feet. Let's see if he's able to. Uh, I'll have to. Uh, I've not heard of it. I'll have to look it up. Actually, I have heard of it a little bit, but I'll have to look it up and see a bit more. Oh, nice, nice straights. There. Oh, had nice straights from Rambo. Didn't hit him with a brutal uppercut. Lead uppercut. Stuns Congo there for a second, but Congo even trying to get the takedown back himself now. You can see the stamina. The the stamina advantage of Rampage here. He's really at work in check. Back to the clinch. I'm not sure if this is a good place to be. Eating uppercuts. Eating uppercuts from Rampage! Rampage backed up for a second and then came in with the left hook. Yeah, I mean, he is... Looking impressive here. Again, tried to go for the clinch, but Czech's really getting those kicks going now. And denying the clinch. I love that body shot. Oh, this time Czech is wise to it and reverses him. And he rocks Conga. I mean, he rocks Rampage. Rampage catches the punch. But look at that sweep from, from Rampage. This is wild. Man, they really mixed it up in that round, Joe. Yeah, both these guys are very well rounded, and they had a chance to show it in there. <laughs> Poke his nose. Let's take a look at the replay from that round, Mike. This was an unbelievable suplex. Beautiful technique. And here's that we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what Rampage wants. Power behind that. I'm going to try to catch that, but it was just a bit off. And this is that Actually, I don't know if you can catch up because... Yeah, he, uh, right he, he got mounted and got rocked, but he caught the punch reversed. So... A lot of versatility being shown in that round, Mike. Don't crowd him. Relax. Don't go for the big hook. Use the right hand. Ariani gets us set for round two. Second round of this bomb burner. Are you ready to fight? Are you ready? We are set for the start of round number two. This fight scheduled for Oh, big right hand, and he rocks him! He rocks him! Is Kong gonna go down? Nice body shot. And to the head again, and then to the body man. Really mixing it up. Making Congo pay. For uh, for the mistakes. He's, he is really looking impressive here. I mean, Congo is landing big shots himself. He is absolutely landing big shots. He's still in this fight. I mean, it's heavyweight. Anything can happen. Nice body shot there. Almost got caught with the with the left hook, and then again, nice dodge there from Congo. Uh, from Congo, sways out the way of that, that those hooks. Let's see if Rampage can throw him. No, nope, full mount again for Congo. Oh, oh, eat some shots. Rampage kicks him off. Or, or sweeps it, or yeah, gets back to full guard, kicks him into full guard. He's landing big shots, it's Congo! Oh, oh, it's Rampage, Congo's hurt! This might be it, it's over! Rampage stops Czech Congo in the second round. After getting rocked a few times, I mean, that was... That was a hell of a fight. He had to deal with some real adversity there. He got rocked... Was it twice or three times? He got... He got hit real hard. I mean, Congo put it on him when he could. Look at it from this angle. Oof. It was just too much for the Frenchman. And with 
with our official decision. Here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean is going to both from Ulster in the game. One minute, 49 seconds of the second round. Declaring the winner by TKO, Winton Ray Yeah, he is a beast. Jackson. Maybe Rampage can compete in both weight classes. I mean, it's not a hard. It's not a hard cut for him to make 205 at this point, and he can. I mean, he's doing well. At, okay, so uh, so. Okay, so Rampage rocked once. I thought he was rocked twice. He was rocked once, and Conquer was rocked three times. But still, he had to deal with some. Uh, some punishment. So. Impressive. Come event coming up. Mick Weed to Gee versus John Jones the rematch. Now, this may look like a squash match. It is. But, um, I mean, Miguel dropped Rockhold, so we'll see how he gets on against John Jones. Hey, what's up, Jackson? I'm good, man. How are you? Just watched the film earlier today so while I was uh, waiting for Universe Mode. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was a good film. I enjoyed it. And uh, we've had a good card, so we're moving on to the co-main event. And then after that, obviously, main event. And, uh, yeah, that'll be it. But still, we've had some great fights, so... Co-main event, here we come. Co-main event of the evening, a light heavyweight showdown between Machine Gun and John Bones Jones. As dynamic with his grappling as he is with his striking, John Bones Jones has dominated the light heavyweight division and only gets better with each fight. A gifted athlete with a long reach and powerful takedowns, Jones has made it very clear that he's a force to be reckoned with. Standing across from him in the red corner is Machine Gun. With an unbreakable will and outstanding cardio, he uses his wrestling skills to put his opponents on their back and outwork them from bell to bell. And now with the official introductions of our fighters, Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the co-main event of the evening. Three rounds of fighting in the UFC light heavyweight division. Introducing first. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist. He stands six feet four inches tall, weighing in at 205 pounds. Fighting out of Endicott, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the current UFC light heavyweight champion of the world, John Bones Jones. And now, fighting out of the red corner, this man is a submission wrestler. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall, weighing in at 205 pounds. Fighting out of Sao Paulo, Brazil. Machine Gun! And when the action begins, our referee in charge of this contest is Eve Levine. Eve Levine, our referee. Mike Goldberg alongside my partner Joe Rogan, and we are ready to get this fight ready? started. You ready? John Jones, Machine Gun. This will probably be over in about three seconds flat, but who knows. Hey, uppercut from... Uh, oh, catches the strike! Does Mick Weed. He's the big body shot, though. He's got to get him down. Oh, look at this. Straight to side control. Big shots, big shots. Mick Weed's, Mick Weed's in trouble. He's got to catch the strikes. 
Oh, he survives. But he's got a transition. He's got a transition. Full guard. He's trying to go for the Omoplata. He's eating shots. See if he can catch a strike. Potentially, he's eating big shots from Jones here. Oh, get in! Get in! Whoa, that was kind of tight for a second. Woo! Oh, he's getting slammed by Jones. Let's see what he does from the top here. Oh, he goes for a heel, a toe hold! A toe hold! This is tight! This is tight! No way. That's tight! Is he gonna- He does it! Meekweed! Submits John Jones! <laughs> the best ever! Well, the best worst ever. <laughs> Rage, peace, brutality, Kung Fu. Oh, that is painful. This is madness. This is, this is the true reality that has been hidden all this time. <laughs> uh, that's going as a separate video. Dude, he got him with the fucking Frank Mir. He got him with the Frank Mir. Hammer Nogues, American face, Mickweed, submits John motherfucking Jones. <laughs> oh, my friend, there is a lot to, there is a lot to uh, unpack with the whole Mickweed um, lore. Jesus Christ, okay. I mean, that submission was locked. I mean, halfway through, you could tell he might he was going to get that shit. And it was, oh, my God. Because the first submission, uh, you know, he got the he uh, he went for the guillotine and um, it was tight initially, but Jones escaped. So I thought, mm, I think that might be. It. I don't think he's going to get a second. But then he grabs the fucking toehold and he gets it. The thing is, McWeed is very skilled with submissions. The problem is he has no chin. So all strength. So, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's, he has to just die for submissions. <laughs> Mickweed hug. Yeah. Buchecha. Buchecha? I don't, I don't know what that is, but he'll take it. I think let's just move on to the main event. We'll, uh, yeah. Let me actually, let me record that. Upload it's a separate thing. God. Damn! There we go. Yeah. I mean, hey, kudos to Jones. He escaped that guillotine. He escaped that. He slammed him. But, hey. Okay, main event. Let's get it. Mark Kobelnik, Jose Aldo. Number five versus number six. This should be a good one. between Mark Hominick and Jose Aldo. Debuting in the Octagon as the inaugural UFC featherweight champion, Jose Jr. Aldo is one of the most feared 145 pound fighters on the planet. Possessing a perfect combination of speed, power and technique, this Brazilian warrior has defeated a who's who of featherweight contenders. 
Impressive in his UFC featherweight debut with a first round knockout of George Roop, Mark the Machine Hominick is a brilliant striker with submission skills to match. Possessing both speed and finishing ability, he's sure to put on an exciting show in the octagon tonight. Now, with the official introductions, the veteran voice of the Octagon, here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. And now, live from the Red Rock Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, it's time! Three rounds in the UFC featherweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu fighter. He stands five feet, seven inches tall, weighing in at 145 pounds. Fighting out of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the current UFC featherweight champion of the world. Jose Junior Aldo. And now, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a Muay Thai kickboxer. He stands five feet, eight inches tall, weighing in at 145 pounds. Fighting out of London, Ontario, Canada. Mark the Machine Hominick. And when the action begins, our referee in charge of this contest is Dan Mergliata. Dan Mergliata, our referee. Mike Goldberg alongside Joe Rogan. We are ready are to ready? get things started. Jose Aldo, Mark Kamenik. And here we go. So this is our main event of the evening. This is number six, Jose Aldo, fighting number five, Mark Kamenik. This is really one of the... I mean, this is this is a big fight because the winner will move into the top five and will, uh, would have earned the right to face the division's best, so... Uri Faber is sitting pretty at the top right now. I mean, there's still a few guys that are, you know, are looking, uh, looking at Faber, you know? Of course, being the champion, you do have a target on your back, so... There's a couple guys in line, but... Dude, this is... Uh, this this would be uh, fresh meat, so to speak, in the top five. The crowd in favor of Jose Aldo. Hold on, side control, landing some big shots on Aldo. Aldo traditionally has faded um, as it gets later in the fight. Not so much of an issue in third three round fights, but when it comes to five round fights, he does start to fade. But he's getting he's getting caught cool here. He's got to be careful. Got to escape, move. I want to get doesn't want to get trapped in one place. Of course, in real life, this is what Hominik did in one of the rounds to Aldo, where Aldo was completely gassed. <laughs> hip escape. Still not able to kick him off, though. Hominik with that top game. Oh, look at this. Trying to stand up, maybe. Still not able to get back up. Oh. I mean, they. I think they're definitely still good. I mean, his footwork. I mean, though, I mean, he. His footwork was good against uh, Edgar. Goes for the takedown himself. Back to their feet. Oh look at this! Aldo's really trying to shoot. I wonder why. Back to their feet. Oh, spinning back kick. Nice uppercut, and then the shot again. Odd, uh, odd game plan for Aldo. Why wow, he keeps shooting? Nice little uh, bob out of range there. Nice high kick. Yeah, it misses, but it, oh, it gets blocked. But it was a nice high kick. Look at this, Hominik shoots. Aldo should be able to sprawl that. Yep. End of the first round. Oh, look at this! It gets him down. Interesting. I didn't. I didn't expect to see um, Aldo shoot so much, but 
Maybe he's just trying to minimize damage. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm just watching. Universe mode is where we watch the uh, the AI fight each other, basically. Let's take a look at the replay from that round, Mike. This was just an unbelievable counter right here. This is flawless timing. And here was that spectacular counter attack. Dodges that incoming strike and then bang. And here's that lightning fast takedown. Amazing wrestling technique. A lot of versatility being shown in that round, Mike. Listen to me, finish every combination with a kick, keep the right kick off. There's the beautiful Ariani as we get set for round two. Are you ready? Are you ready? Second round, coming up. Set for round two. This okay, here we go. Three, oh, nice right straight there from Aldo. And an uppercut. He shoots again on, on um, Hobbinick. Um... That is not something you... I mean, look, there are really better people than me to do that. Great job on the reversal. He takes his back. He's got both hooks in. Joe, this is dangerous. And I don't even live in America, so... Ooh, nice uh, left hand there from Aldo. <laughs> oh, elbows from Aldo. Brutal ground and pound. Ever knew. Uh, UFC on Spirit 3, which came out in 2012 on the PS3 and the Xbox 360. Playing on the PS3. Well, I'm actually watching because Universe Mode is where we watch the AI fight. So, oh, listen back up. Interesting. But Aldo again shoots. This is very interesting. Nice shot there. But doesn't get it. And again, he shoots. This. I don't know why Aldo is so insistent on chewing. Maybe he feels... Maybe he's got an injury or he doesn't feel confident in his striking for whatever reason. But he is... Oh, what a right hand from Hominick there. That high kick almost caught Aldo as well. <laughs> oh! Oh, Aldo's got hurt! Hominick piled on the pressure. Oh, man, he's eating shots. They took that fight everywhere in that round, Mike. Absolutely. Some well-rounded skills shown by each yeah. fighter. We have no idea what to expect here in the Yeah, I make the cards. But I'm looking forward to uh, I don't know. Let me look him up. No, I make the cards. There's a full ranking system. My community page has them. And this was right on target. That is nasty, scary power in that shot. Oh, that uppercut. Very good action in that round, Mike. Keep those uh, hands up inside. The leg kicks are there. All right, the leg kicks are there. The beautiful Brittany gets us set for round three. <laughs> Well, I mean, I know you're joking, but if I if I did that, then it wouldn't really make, make sense that I put him against Adesanya. Look at this, Aldo coming out with the knee. But I put Bisping against Adesanya. But oh, I know you were joking. I only joke too. Let's see if we can get a get the uh, the throw. 
Oh, they break. <laughs> Again, he goes for the clinch. He doesn't get it. Oh, he's getting hit. He's got to be careful. Man, Omnic's box is clean. Oh, he's hurt. This might be it. Aldo's in trouble. Let's see if he can catch the strike. This might be it. It's over. It's over. Yeah, almost. Man, Hominick just destroyed Aldo there. That was pretty much domination from the word go. He didn't really let Aldo get anything off. Took him down, defended most takedown attempts. He He's won one or two. I think he won two in a row. Or one. He won the last fight against Diego Nunes. Uh, did he fight Diego Nunes? He fought someone. Yeah, I think he did fight Nunes and won. <laughs> the pre-WME vet, yeah. He's long gone. It's all about the money. Hey, what's up, Thuggan? Yeah, he kind of was. It was weird. I didn't expect to see him wrestle so much. pre Reebok veteran. Nike veteran. Good fight. I think uh, Blades would probably take his wrestling in ground upon. is brutal. Declaring the winner by TKO, Mark the Machine Hominick. Mark Hominick is victorious. Uh, I did not create UL, no. Um, but I'm probably going to have to uh, put that UL Romero in universe mode. Because it's very good Romero. That was the main event. That was a, that was a great card. I mean, there was some crackers on there. Some wars. Some, uh, some great fights. It was, uh, yeah. Not much to say, except it was a very good card. Now. At this point, there will be spoilers, so from here on out, if you want to watch the rest of the card, I suggest you leave now. Come back in a few hours once it's up. Alright, let's uh, see what the game thinks about the awards. Uh, not really. Not in the game. Now, we usually run fan-made awards, but we'll have to... Uh, I don't know, maybe I'll post... A, I think what I'll do is I'll post a poll, maybe? On my channel. I don't know about about who they think will fight the night or performance of the night. It's a tricky one. We'll see. I said it's a tricky one. It's not really. I'll probably uh do it later tonight. Joe, another great night of fights. <coughs> this battle though has to be our fight of the night. Yeah, I agree with that. Well, Mike, both guys came in and put it all out on the line, and it shows here as we take a look back at some of the replays. I think the real winners in this fight were the fans, because this was just an awesome fight. Look at that other car. Don't he, I don't think it hit him, but. Yeah, it missed him, but still. Hey, okay, no clean knockout of the night. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see what the submission of the night is. It, well, there's only one, so. It is lovely, yeah. By the way, Pedro, Alison is Brazilian, so if you two, or if you if, if you're not sure about a certain word, and Alison is here, he might be. He might know it. So if you speak to him Brazilian, he uh, he uh, may be able to uh, translate it for you or something. You don't see a toe hold too often, but Mick Weed just. Is unorthodox in every single way, so. Force the tap. <clears throat> the 
crowd in attendance here tonight enjoyed our night of fights, and we here at the UFC hope that you have enjoyed them too. For my partner Joe Rogan and all of us at the Ultimate Fighting Championship, Mike Goldberg saying so long until next time. We see you right back here inside the Octagon. Okay, so, Togo Elvis got a controversial win over Matt Sarah. I personally thought that was a victory for Sarah, but hey, um, but as the judges can sometimes see different things or see things differently, and you know, you know, I mean, it, it, fights can go either way sometimes, but I personally thought that was an Elvis win. Hey, uh, Vladimir, Mad Vladimir Matyushenko just put the hurt on Leoto Machida. Grinded him out, got a decision win. Uh, impressive win, and that's big for him. The newcomer, Charlie Valencia, got a uh, scored, a, scored a decision win over Chris Carrier, so who was ranked. Valencia was not, however. I mean, they're just. Uh, he was very close to the rankings, so that'll definitely put him in the top 15 come the rankings update, so that's a good win for him. Mike Brown gets, uh, gets it done. Uh, scores a decision win over George Roop, who was uh, very. Uh, very game, back and forth fight, but in the end, Mike Brown gets it done. Wins, I believe, 30-27. Alistair Overeem gets uh, or not, uh, TKO's Gabriel Gonzaga in what was a pretty interesting fight because Gonzaga was, um... <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a sh yeah, Leo did lose, and Mike Brown, the coach, yeah, that is the same Mike Brown. Um, Gonzaga was sort of very head kick happy early on and sort of blew his gas tank, so. That, that was uh, good for Overeem. He capitalized and he put him away in the second round. Rampage successfully moves up to heavyweight in what might be a one-off, but we'll see. Could possibly be a permanent move. Um, or at least a move for some time. Um, takes out Czech Congo, the French the, the you know the French heavyweight who is renowned for his power and his striking. There's not really much to say. McQueen de Guy takes out John Jones. Submission round one. Probably the best win ever in UFC history, let's be honest. Um, Mark Kopernik pieces up Josie Aldo, dominates him from start to finish. Um, defended all of his takedown attempts, which was peculiar because I'd have thought Aldo would have. Uh, uh, yeah, I thought Aldo would have gone. Uh, a bit, I thought Aldo would have primarily kept on, kept it on the feet or tried to keep it on the feet, but no, he tried to he tried to shoot a lot. He got a couple of takedowns, but in the, overall, Kopernik um, denied them. He sprawled. He got his own takedowns. Um, but he survived, uh, or oh, he got he got the win. So that's a big win for him. He will, uh, he, he's looking up now. So his next fight will most likely be uh, someone in the top five. There's a good few fights there for him before Faber. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, yeah, Mick with that easy money. Uh, Heavy Rampage and Jones retiring, probably yeah. Well, jo um, see what what I might do is I might like have Jones retire for a bit and maybe he'll come back later. I don't know about that. I do. I mean, I don't want to just have fires. I, I, I will retire some fires permanently, but I have to be careful which ones I retire because the roster gets a little thin in some divisions. So, but at least with he light heavyweight, there's a couple of fires afterwards. So, we'll see. But yeah, probably Jones retiring for a little bit, uh, if not permanently. But yeah, we'll see. But anyway, that was it. So I hope you all enjoyed. Um, I'll be back next week with UFC nine, which will have some uh, surprises on it. So keep your eye on my community tab because that's where the surprises will be announced um, some of the news as well <laughs> maybe who knows some of the news as well Tyson Fury decided that oh, d d chose to join AKA um, training with Daniel Cormier Habib um, Cain Velasquez on his wrestling so and Rockhold Luke Rockhold got upset at that and decided that he would uh, well he actually got suspended by Twitter for, you know, spewing too much vitriol at Tyson Fury. So, he is, he is left AKA and is now, uh, he's decided to join uh, Hard Knocks 365. Ragnarok with it. <laughs> where it ends of reboots. Where, hey, that'd be cool. Like, if, if I ever, shit, I mean, if I ever fucking, 
if it, hell, if it ever gets to a point where I have like I, I transfer it to a different game and there's too many fighters that aren't in there and I can't really create them, I'll just fucking do a Spider Verse thing and bring other people in or something, or just yeah, restart the universe. <laughs> But anyway, that's it. I'm out. So I'll see you all next week. Well, I'll see you next week for Universe Mode, but I'll probably be streaming tomorrow or something or the day after. Maybe even later tonight. We'll see. Yeah, I get you. If it gets a bit too complicated, we could always uh, start over. That is the that is the beauty of video games. But yeah, I will see you all later. Um, I'll, see, I'll see some of you later on the Discord server. And uh, yeah, I'm out for now. Take care, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you all for coming by. Hope you enjoyed it. Alright, cool, yeah. I'll, I'll let you know anyway. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.